93 years old and I was born in Detroit, Michigan to a mother who was on a trip from New Orleans. I became a park ranger at the age of 85. Uh, that was about seven years ago. Um, I sort of morphed into the role from being a consultant to the National Park Service uh, about 13 years ago. I became on staff as a consultant and it, became, it grew into becoming a park ranger. I don't think I had my first significant job until I was 50. I was a stay-at-home mom. I raised four children uh, to adulthood before I really had a significant job um, after the, 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 the Second World War. We're here in the Rosie the Riveter Homefront National Historical Park in Richmond, California as an homage to the women of World War II who entered the workforce, non-traditional labor, for the first time. In the film that, that we share, which is called Homefront Heroes, there's a woman who was a Rosie, a genuine, riveting Rosie, who is still living, I think Agnes is 95. She lives in Rossmore in the Walnut Creek area. But on the film, she says, it was the greatest coming together of the American people that I've ever lived through. And there was a time when I'd have said, that's hogwash. I mean, that is absolutely untrue. Except that somehow I've mellowed and I've aged into a place where I am now capable of living with conflicting truths. And as long as there's a place on the planet where Agnes's truth and mine can coexist, that's as much as I need to have happen, and this park is that place. Um, I wish I had learned that as a high school student. I wish I had known that this is not an either or world, but it's a both and world, and that all of it's true for somebody. And that learning to respect the truths of others is something that's one of the greatest lessons that we learn out of this place. I live my life in context. Uh, the reason I say that is that I seem not only aware of my place in it, but in what surrounds me. Um, so that what I'm presenting now to the world out of my work is that life in context, and I'm able to bring up the context in my memory. The fact that I've outlived most of the people whose memories don't agree with mine makes me an authority is an aside. <laughs> but that's also true. I am able to say, finally, I know. I am able to be aware that I'm living in the last decade of my life. And that what I say and do every day counts. And that life and time are very precious. It took a lot of people a lot of family, a lot of friends, for me to have attained 93 years that I now speak proudly about, because they all weren't all proud lives. They weren't all proud years. Some of them were troubled. But my survival, I think, depended upon being able to relate to those around me and keeping myself whole enough so that I could do that. We are interdependent upon one another. That it's our duty to be sure that our lives are whole in order to serve the communities that we must live in for survival. But I don't know how one does that, um, except being mindful of that interdependence because no one of us can survive the world alone. My life certainly, certainly proves that.